All right, welcome to my video about SketchUp's animation abilities. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to actually talk about how to build this model, just how to animate it. Uh, by way of background, this model here, let me bring this up. This is actually a project I uh, recently did where I was charged with designing a space based on a painting. So I used this uh, original Brock painting for inspiration, developed a couple dozen schemes, and eventually came up with uh, something I could take into AutoCAD and then eventually sketch up and ultimately into uh, a photorealistic program where I was able to uh, you know I had movable chairs trees whole nine yards and made a really nice really nice model but the cool thing about SketchUp is I was able to do that in just a few minutes and it allowed me to study the space and figure it out and I uh, you know you can do cool animations with it too that's what we're going to do right now Okay, first thing to learn about animations is how to set it up before you even start. What I mean by that, you'll see all these scenes. These are called scenes or pages over the top. When you first create a SketchUp model, there are none. Uh, whenever you click on one, it bookmarks that scene. To create one, you go to View, Animation, Add Scene. Okay, from there, let me just click on the last one here. From there, you're going to hit Add. It'll have uh, a new tab pop up. Change my camera here. Then you hit update. And you're going to hit add. Move to the next one. Update. Click add. Move to the next scene that you want to store. And hit update. Basically, let me go back here. The reason I said you want to be careful and you want to think about how to set it up, you can see here my camera is in a parallel projection. The reason that's useful is uh, looking at this bench right here, if I were to change it to perspective SketchUp is good but it's not that good, you still see the sides of the bench as well as the top but in a uh, in a parallel projection it actually appears as it would be in 2D so if I have a scene it's gonna, SketchUp is going to remember that that's a parallel projection in scene 12 it's a perspective because the camera is now in a perspective view same thing with scene 13 and then scene 14. Uh, this model here only has a couple of scenes in it, but I've done some with you know, over 200, 200 scenes in it. And if you don't think about what you want to do from the beginning, you're going to potentially have to go back and update all of those scenes. So think about it from the beginning, what you want to do, as well as your, your styles here. Um, if you want to have profiles or extensions, endpoints, jitter, all that kind of stuff, you're going to have to go through and update everything. I like to do mine a little bit cleaner, looking like this. Uh, your shadows also. I don't know why, but SketchUp in plan view, this is what it defaults to is a, a shadow setting about like this. You can see how the material materials get darker and then lighter. This might not be the best example. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on your computer. With this check, use sun for shading. Slide your dark to 100 and your light to 0. So do just the opposite you'll see that the materials actually stay the same no matter what you do. So as you're rolling through an animation, your eye's not distracted by materials getting lighter and darker. But um, you're going to have to remember that when you're setting it all up because uh, your scenes are going to remember shadow settings right here. So anyway, the only thing I keep unchecked is hidden geometry. That's because, for those of you who know SketchUp well, you know that sometimes as you're creating a model you get weird construction lines like this that obviously shouldn't be there so what you do is you hide them by holding down the shift key with the eraser tool and it does that okay. if I were to save scene 14 or update it as SketchUp calls it with that line hidden and this box was checked as soon as I hit scene 13 you would see that line right there show up okay so it might not make total sense to you but just trust me, and if this is unchecked, you're only going to have to go through and hide things once. Otherwise, you'd have to go through all of these scenes and go back and hide that one line and update each of them individually. So, anyway, let's uh, animate it. Okay, so you go to the, after you go through the scene and figure out where you want things, and remember, it's literally going to mimic exactly where your camera is. So if you have a camera here, and the next one's here, then here, then there, your animation is literally going to be bumpy like this. The other big thing to remember before we do this is uh, if you click on your model info tab, 
First thing it defaults to is animation. Keep this checked. Enable scene transitions. What this is saying is you have four seconds between each bookmarked scene. So if I come way out here, my scene two is right here. My scene three is going to be way in here like this. It's going to take four seconds to get from here to there. Okay. Now if I have a scene right here, and I have four seconds to go to there, animation is going to look like this. One, two, three, four. If I take this down to two, it's going to go one, two. In other words, a faster model. The lower this number is, the faster your animation is going to go. The higher it is, the slower your animation is going to go. Keep this at zero so it doesn't actually pause between each, each uh, scene. Okay. I usually set mine at three, but depending on the scale of your model, um, you'll just have to experiment with that. Go to File, Export, Animation. There's two options I do. I either do an AVI file or a tagged image file or TIFF. For an AVI file, go to Options. I do 1080 by 720 because that's the standard HD frame rate, uh, frame size. Uh, you can do smaller, certainly. It's just going to be a smaller animation. Frame rate at 30. Click Anti-Alias. That makes it smoother. Um, you can s click these two, but loop to starting scene. That means at the end of your animation, it's going to loop back to the beginning. So I usually don't like to do that. Um, anyway, you're going to hit Export. And what it's going to do is take 1,172 frames, taking you know, approximately 25 minutes. Let me cancel that. Uh, okay, once that's done, let me bring it up. This is what it looks like. Now, it might be a little choppy on your screen because of the software I use to record my desktop, but it is smooth on my screen. But it's fast, as you can see, and it goes up and down. Okay, might make you feel like you're on an amusement park ride or something, but basically, you're going to experiment with whatever works best for your model okay and this is a really basic square site so it's gonna get pretty boring just watching it go around but you can fly around the site and get down dirty and fly all around and have lots of you know cool effects the other option is to do export animation TIFF same option it's 1080 by 720 at 30 and what this is doing export let me open it up here. It's actually, if I open up this first one, this is the first scene, the first frame of the animation you just saw. Okay, and all it's doing is creating basically 1,172 TIFFs. I like doing this method because if something crashes, I can go back and still salvage all these other frames. And uh, it just makes it, uh, you have to have something like Adobe. Adobe Pro Premiere or Premiere Pro, excuse me, it's a Creative Suite software. Um, it's going to take all these tips and compress them into a movie like you just saw, but it's still a it's still a movie, excuse me. So anyway, I'm going to cancel that. As you can see, it takes less time. Um, so anyway, those are your options. Um, SketchUp is free, people. You can get this online and do this in a few minutes, and it's really cool. The clients are going to love it and it's a neat way to be able to take a very you know, basic design, complex design, whatever kind of design you have and fly through the space and actually make, make a movie. That's pretty cool considering SketchUp is, is free. You know, even if you bought it, I think it's going to have a couple more options for you to use. But the tools are there for you to have impressive displays of your design. That's what you're doing. SketchUp is just another tool that you can use to communicate. So go out and experiment with animations. See what, what the effects are if you zoom way out and then have a scene that's you know, really close by and it's literally going to snap all the way around the site. And uh, Anyway, have fun with it and uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks.